Hello and welcome back to Scout Report. 10 years ago, a hundred million pounds was a fortune. Now it seems like a pittance. By and large, fans expect that if fifth or sixth place teams want to claim a spot in the Champions League, it could take years and hundreds of millions, not to mention luck, to make that happen. But for some teams, the summer of 2020 represents a unique opportunity. Between relegation, decreased sponsorship and matchday revenue, most clubs around Europe are unlikely to be flush with cash this year and will be more dependent than ever on sales to stay afloat. With more urgent need for funds and a lack of buyers, player prices could drop by as much as half in divisions like the Championship, the Eredivisie and Ligue 1. And as a consequence, if a club is bankrolled by someone with means, they'd be smart to go and spend big this year while prices are low, before they return to normal levels in 2021. So today we're setting out a blueprint for outsmarting the market this summer. Armed with the £100 million we normally pay Joe Tomlinson, we found players likely to be ignored by the super-rich super clubs, who can be picked up for next to nothing and could become the bedrock of a side competing at the very highest level. For sides like Arsenal, Borussia Dortmund or Atletico Madrid, this could be the route back to the top. Let's start in midfield. Defensive midfield Unless a team is powered by a single superstar attacker, like Liverpool in 2013-14 or Arsenal with Van Persie, solid sides tend to have solid midfields. And while creativity is important in the centre of the park, defence should generally come first. On previous FD videos, you've probably heard us praise defenders who win over 80% of the tackles they attempt. But that means that even the best defenders fail with a fifth of their challenges, so teams need to protect them as much as possible by playing ball winners with good awareness in midfield. And if those guys can beat the press and move their side up the field, all the better. So when we look for centre mids, we want players who have good defensive numbers, generally over four tackles and interceptions a game, who can also play a part in possession with decent passing and dribbling output. And those considerations will bring you straight to one of our favourite youngsters, Toulouse midfielder Ibrahim Songere. The Ivorian, now 22, has five caps for his country and nearly a hundred appearances for Toulouse, but is set to leave Le Pichoun after a dismal season saw them finish at the foot of Ligue 1, with just 13 points in 28 games. But that was no fault of Songere's. The 6 foot 3 inch defensive midfielder won the ball over five times per 90 for his team in 2019 20 and ranked sixth in the division for tackles per game, following up fifth place the previous campaign. In fact, he regained possession for Toulouse 124 times in 25 appearances, while to date Arsenal, linked with Songere in the French press, have got just 151 tackles and interceptions out of Granit Xhaka, Danny Ceballos and Lucas Torreira in a combined 60 league appearances. Songere also completed over a dribble a match for the second year running, with a 75% success rate, and when you watch him, it's easy to like the way he uses his quick feet, awareness and huge frame to shield the ball and step out of pressure. When he does so, he can distribute too, leading his admittedly dreadful team in passes per game and long balls, with over 50 of the former and 4 of the latter, as well as making the top 20 players in Ligue 1 for passing into the final third showing that he isn't just hitting safe balls to the wings and playing one-twos with the centre-backs. With this summer's rumour mill finding Thomas Partey, Miralem Pjanic, Adrian Rabio, and Jorginho all among its grist, it's clear that big teams are on the lookout for centre-mids, and Songere's age, coupled with Toulouse's relegation, means he can probably be had for under £20 million, an enticing prospect given the financial constraints that cancelled leagues and empty stadiums have placed on the continent's clubs. For teams like the Gunners, Dortmund or Man United, a swoop for Songere should be high on their list of priorities. Defence Next up is centre-back, where Champions League hopefuls like Arsenal, Chelsea, United, Tottenham and Roma are all set on strengthening in 2020. As you probably know by now, we're big fans of Real Valladolid's Mohamed Salisu, who has a £10 million buyout clause, Reims' Axel de Zassi, who has a year left on his contract, and Nice's Malon Sarr, who is available on a free once the market opens so we thought we'd take the opportunity to highlight someone different. All eyes turned to Saint-Étienne this season have probably been focused on William Saliba, with the 19-year-old destined for Arsenal in the summer. But equally deserving of attention is Wesley Fofana, another 19-year-old centre-back who has actually played more league 1 minutes than Saliba this campaign. At 6'3", the Frenchman is barely shorter than his lanky teammate and is much more aggressive in style. Saliba wins possession for his team 3.6 times a game, but Fofana makes around 4.6 tackles and interceptions, and even boasts a higher success rate with his challenges, coming away with the ball 83% of the time compared to Saliba's 77%. 
He's also, on current form, better in the air. With a massive 5 aerial duels won a game, he's 10th in Ligue 1, and he has a higher success rate than anyone at Saint-Etienne, winning an incredible 72% of these challenges. That's extremely rare for a teenager, and in fact it's rare for anyone, sitting just 2% off Virgil van Dijk's benchmark in the Premier League this term. Of course you can't have everything, and Fofana is yet to develop a sophisticated passing game, with only a third of his long ball attempts finding the target. That might be something he grows into, but even if he never learns to spray passes around like Bonucci, Fofana's anticipation, game reading and recovery pace should turn him into a useful conventional defender, more in the mould of a Vidic than a Ferdinand, a Godin rather than a Boateng. Saint-Étienne boss Claude Puel is clearly a fan, having already extended the youngster's contract since taking over in October 2019, but he's also spoken of the need to reduce the wage bill and even ruled out making signings over £4 million. If a team puts Saliba money on the table for Fofana, expect the Saints to grudgingly admit defeat. Attacking midfield Between Jack Grealish, Kai Havertz, Isco and Lorenzo Pellegrini, there's plenty of attacking midfield talent at the upper end of the market this year, but finding a creative player on the cheap is generally hard. Consistent creativity and goal threat from deep rarely go unnoticed, and competition for top-level number 10s has seen Chelsea and Man United both pay upwards of £35 million for players outside top leagues, with Hakim Ziyech arriving from the Eredivisie and Bruno Fernandes from Portugal. But one clever signing could be Wolfsburg's Josip Brekalo, who came through Dinamo Zagreb's academy, an institution which has specialised in producing versatile, intelligent, technically gifted players like Modric, Kovacic and Kramaric. At £9 million, Brekalo is among the club's 10 most lucrative sales ever and has now been in Germany for four years, establishing himself as a starter for the Wolves in the last two. The 21-year-old registered six Bundesliga goals and assists in 2018-19 and, at the time of writing, sits on seven for the 2019-20 campaign. But the narrow difference in those numbers conceals how big a step forward he's taken. Last season, he took or assisted three shots for his team a game, but this year he's at five, with his rate of 2.8 chances created per match, fourth best in Germany and level with Jadon Sancho. As a consequence, his expected goals per 90 have gone from 0.24 to 0.5, and he's been good in European competition too, contributing six goals in eight Europa League appearances. Brekalo is already a high-volume dribbler, completing over two take-ons a game, but he's not the finished article, with over half of those dribble attempts ending in failure though you'd expect that to improve with experience as he learns when to pass and when to run with the ball. It's also probably partially down to position. When he plays on the wing, it's easier for Brekalo to find space and beat his man, while in the number 10 spot he faces more congestion as defensive midfielders and centre-backs combine to close him down. Still, Brekalo's young age and excellent output on a side outscored by eight other Bundesliga teams are more than enough to warrant interest, and teams like Lazio or Wolves, looking to reinforce an ageing attack, should consider a quick swoop in the 25 to 30 million pound region before he moves out of their price range. Forward It's hard to strengthen an attack on a budget. The competition for Willian and Dries Mertens, both free agents this summer but both well into their 30s, shows that teams want bargain additions to their front lines, but these deals can often turn out worse than imagined. No transfer fee often means an inflated wage and longer contract, meaning a club offering Willian two years at his current salary of 120k a week is going to spend around £12.5 million on the Brazilian's decline and be left with a 34-year-old with no resale value in 2022. So we recommend targeting youngsters who may have an upfront cost but will demand lower wages and repay a portion of their fee if they end up moving on. And once again our bargain hunting takes us to France, where the early end to the season saved Dijon from a relegation battle, with the Côte d'Or side 16th and just three points above the drop when the competition was cancelled. Only Reims and Toulouse scored fewer than the Owls' 27 goals in 28 games, making Munir Schuia's output all the more impressive. The 21-year-old scored four times in Ligue 1 but was let down by his teammates, creating chances worth nearly four expected assists but seeing every opportunity he laid on go to waste. If the players around him had finished at average rates, Schwier would have ended up with 0.4 goal contributions per game, a better record than James Madison in 2019-20. While Schwier takes a healthy 2.3 shots a game, his XG numbers are largely due to an excellent tally of 2.6 key passes per 90, fifth best in France and the same as Neymar. At his age, that's special, and Schwier did it despite being moved around from his preferred spot on the left wing to the right, the number 10 role, and even central midfield at one stage. 
However, the constant reshuffles forced him to develop his all-round game, and he has an excellent work rate on the flank, racking up around three tackles and interceptions per match protecting his fullback and suggesting he could adapt nicely to an elite pressing side. Remarkably, Shriya is doing all this in his first campaign in the top flight, and he can contribute to ball progression as well, with a massive 4.2 dribbles completed per 90. Good for 8th in Europe, and of the 7 players completing more, only Messi and Neymar can boast a better success rate than his 63%. As Alain Saint-Maximin has shown this season, dribbling ability usually transfers well from one league to another, and as Shriya gets stronger, he could become even more of a one-on-one -on -one threat. Signed for just £3 million in the summer, we'd expect the Frenchman to fetch 25 to £30 million this year. And with Aston Villa, Crystal Palace and even Chelsea sniffing around, Dijon's chances of keeping their young superstar look slim. So that was our attempt at fixing a club for £100 million, but who would you have spent the money on? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell to never miss a video. We'll see you next time.